Hello pilots, this is Solarfly, author of the Solarfly Warthog profile for Star Citizen. Uh, today we're talking about the profile for version 2.1, which is freely available at 3dpipeline.net. Uh, first off, I've got to thank uh, my patrons at patreon.com slash solarfly. Uh, thanks for your donations and, uh, and your, your, your kind uh, words of appreciation. Um, and you know the community at large, uh, Reddit, RSI forums, um, you guys have really uh, helped, helped me make this, uh, I think, the best profile available for the Warthog. Before we get started, you want to make sure that the layout XML file has been copied to your Star Citizen directory, and uh, you want your target software running before you launch Star Citizen. So if you haven't done that, uh, exit Star Citizen, run the target software, run the script, and then load the game back up, and everything will work just perfectly. Okay, we're going to go into the hangar to load up one of the ships for training, and... Um, we're going to load the XML file from here as well. Now, sometimes the game will play tricks on you. You may have to reload it from time to time in the Persistent Universe. Uh, you can really bring the XML in at any point during your playtime, but I like doing that in the hangar. It, it seem, seems to uh, remain persistent from game reboot to game reboot. Here we are. Okay, I'm going to the hollow table just to choose a ship. Uh, you can choose any ship you like for this training video. Um, just to start out with, I'm going to take this training ship. Uh, all pilots should start out with a simple, nice ship like the Merlin or your M50. Maybe your Aurora is, is your, uh, your, your preferred training ship. I'm going to load the profile by pressing the tilt key. I'm going to type PP rebind keys and just hit enter. That picks up the defaults and hit the up arrow. Uh, now we're going to load the layout. We do it this way just to avoid any kind of conflicts in the control schemes as the game evolves. Great. Electronic access. Arena commander. And where's my cursor here? Drone, sim. You're going to go into free flight mode. Choose the ship that you'd like to fly. Um, I'm going to take out my Merlin and uh, and load. And uh, just before kind of you guys get loaded here, ships come in with a default configuration, and you just want to make sure that your EAC switch is down and off. Your boat switch here is centered and your pinky switch is also centered to the middle. Make sure that that's not flipped back. Okay, if you do that every time you blow up uh, at reset within the game, uh, you're gonna find uh, managing those, those controls is gonna be a little bit easier. They won't get out of sync as often. We'll talk a little bit later about how to fix these things if they're out of sync during, during flight. Okay, here I've loaded into Broken Moon with an M50, and uh, I'm going to go through the basic flight controls. If I pull back on the stick, I pitch up, pushing forward, pitches down. Left will yaw me to the left, right yaws to the right. I'm set up with rudder pedals, so if I push hard rudder left, I will roll to the left. Rudder right will ro roll to the right. Now the uh, uh, fans of flight simulators will notice that uh, the yaw on stick and the roll on the rudders is backwards to what you would get in atmospheric flight. Um, this is, it makes a lot of sense once you get into some dogfighting, but uh, just in case it's bothering you too much, simply hit this flow R switch, just flip it, whichever direction you happen to be in, just flip that switch and your roll will now be on stick and your yaw will be on your rudders. For the rest of the tutorial, I'm going to actually fly with yaw on the stick. If you, uh, if you don't have rudder pedals and you follow the directions in the readme file, uh, you can make one simple change to the pilot settings file in target so that your uh, rudders, uh, are, uh, rudders is set to zero. What that will do is put the, left, uh, the roll left and roll right on the coolie hat 
on the throttle over here and it will put strafes on your little mouse button X and Y okay so uh, if you don't have rudders don't forget to go do that um, you might want to pause here and, and, and set rudders to zero if you don't have rudders okay we're gonna go through some of the uh, the basic flight and maneuvers here uh, if I th push this throttle forward I'm going to thrust and when combining that with pitch I tend to make kind of nice turns but you see I, I slide a little bit in space because uh, I'm not really pushing against any air so the the thrusters are having to compensate I'm gonna roll and if I want to make a tight turn I back off on my throttle back off on the speed allows me to make tighter turns have more control and then I can accelerate out so once again if I want to make a tighter turn back off on the throttle pull through the horizon and come out and this gives you positive G's on the pilot which you, it's the pilot you, you'll black out less by doing that by backing off on the throttle conversely pushing hard down on the nose like this at full throttle uh, you see my screen starting to turn red this is negative G's it's pushing blood into my eyeballs I don't want to really do that in uh, in combat um, I want to avoid that kind of thing as much as possible okay pull the throttle all the way back and our thrusters are now off so now we're going to take a look at strafing um, and I'm going to do this with an external camera mode if I flip this switch on the throttle right here which is the engine operation left I flip it up I can actually cycle view modes of my ship and by using the hat I can look around the ship so use the joystick hat to look around the ship okay cool right I'm gonna use my toe brake left to strafe perfectly left toe brake right to straight strafe right and on the throttle here I'm going to pull up to strafe up vertically and push down to strafe down now this is a lot of forces on the pilot in some some of the faster ships let's uh, let's cycle our view go back to the cockpit view once again strafe up strafe down toe left and toe right now we don't really need strafe uh, forward or backwards when our when our thrusters are coupled um, so let's, let's let's fly a little bit here let's just say you're on a collision course for an asteroid and uh, y you know you're you're coming in fast the Merlin's quite responsive here so we're not we're not in too much danger but if I want to dodge this, maybe I use my right toe to strafe right and out of the way. And this works when you're going head to head with someone else in combat as well. You want to kind of dodge a little bit vertically, horizontally, look around you. And bring us back to a stop. The next thing we're going to look at is uh, a, an advanced flight mode, which is our decoupled mode. And we can decouple our IFCS computer from our thrusters so that we get full six degrees of freedom in space by pulling this back. Now you'll notice with this pulled back, my thrusters are disabled. This is actually gives you a lot of control around landing pads. You don't want to accidentally thrust into something. Um, and right now I can literally just move left let me see here let's get some some focus points I'm gonna go left and I can go right and up and down the same as we just uh, practiced the difference is that without touching the controls I will keep going in those directions there's no friction and unless I counter it with thrust in the opposite direction I'm going to just keep floating in that direction. So this is decoupled thrusters. The IFCS computer will no longer interfere by firing my thrusters for me. Let's take a look at an external view. OK, 
Okay, thrusting left. Oh, we're getting close to the edge. Whoops. So, you can end up floating and floating and floating and uh, there's nothing actually stopping you other than your opposite thrust. Okay, I've crashed into the uh, the boundary of the simulation. Uh, how I reset that, I can use this APU start switch, flip it up and down quickly. And that gives me a reset. Be careful with that switch. Thrust forward, sideways, and decouple. Practice flying with fully decoupled mode and just see if you can get used to that. Now there's no forward or back, but I do have my left and my right. Now what if I want to thrust forward and thrust reverse? Well, what I'll do is I'll use the switch in the opposite direction. So I'm going to I'm going to flick this forward now. And the the behavior of the throttle changes. When I push forward, I accelerate forward. Centered, I don't do anything, but pulling back will pull me in the opposite direction. And this gives me my my, my uh, longitudinal, longitudinal thrust forward and backward, as you can see. Centered will stop adding thrusters of any kind. So I'm just using my thrusters here, not my main engines, and this is kind of giving me this uh, this strafing behavior. Now combine that with yaw, and you can see that my ship keeps floating in the same direction I was thrusting before, even even if I'm aiming in a different direction entirely. So let's pull this back to center back on the throttle and we've we've now come to a stop so that's how we get out of uh, how, that's how we regain control of the ship with IFCS this allows you to do things like uh, I can maybe thrust towards this boulder and uh, I'm going I will go in this direction I'm gonna decouple my thrusters I can actually face my ship backwards and keep going in this direction so you can see I can kind of fire upon an enemy while floating backwards away from him. Again, I've coupled, I'm center, and everything is stopped, I'm safe. You can see in my HUD display on the upper left that uh, coupled, uh, right above where it says G-safe, um, it's, it's all put together. Okay, here I've loaded a Hornet Ghost with a CF-117 Badger Repeaters on the wings and a CF-227 Panther on the front nose. Uh, sometimes the HUD fails to load in Star Citizen 2.1. Um, you're going to have to reset the game if that happens to you when you don't see the Ghost HUD on the upper left. To cycle through the HUD, I'm going to use the joysticks hat control. This is uh, left and right allow you to cycle through a single fighter's HUD. If you tried this in the newer multi-crew ships like the Freelancer, the Vanguard, the Constellation, the Retaliator, uh, you're not going to uh, get any success with cycling the HUD via the uh, profile or the keyboard. Uh, that is completely broken right now and it's something that that SIG is working on. Um, if I want to select into this HUD, I want to change maybe m one of my weapon settings. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over to weapons here so you see on the upper left weapons is displayed and I want to change my groupings um, right now a single trigger pull will fire my wings a pull all the way and will fire all three weapons and uh, first of all I'm going to show you on the the throttle here when we're talking about weapons the radar altimeter switch reverses that behavior. By, by changing this, a single trigger pull will now just fire my group two with a, with a double pull firing and everything. So this thing here inverts group one and group two. It allows me to choose the weapons I want to be primary. Works really nicely on a Vanguard and, and uh, the Gladius. 
the default loadout. So let's say I want to edit the, the group settings. I'm going to use my EAC switch, flip that up. That puts me into HUD edit mode. And then the thumb on my joystick allows me to move around this HUD. And maybe I want to add the third weapon into group one. So I'm going to press down. And then I'm going to use EAC and I'm going to flip back out of, out of HUD edit mode. Now I have all three weapons firing at the same time. Now I don't particularly like this, this reticle moving out to the right and the left. This is called look ahead. And you'll notice that my, my fire follows this thing. It's really annoying when you're flying with stick and throttle. To lock that, you're going to take the LG warn button and hold it down for a third of a second. Now I don't have, I don't have that problem. I don't look ahead anymore. I look straight down the, the line. It's it's much easier. I also want to remove gimbling. I don't want to gimbal. So the, the LTB button, the red throttle, the red left throttle button, I'm going to hold this down for about half a second. And I no longer have gimbaled weapons. That's how you toggle gimbaled weapons. Once again, to edit my profile for my weapons, Use the EAC switch, the thumb switch here. Maybe I can change which, which weapons I combine in group two. Also, this affects this, the S2 switch on the side, right here on the uh, joystick. Okay. Um, if I cycle the HUD, I also have the same option for power, but there's a faster way to... I can, I can edit my power by doing this too. I can go through this whole thing, uh, and I can adjust things this way, but there's, there's actually a faster way to do this. You don't want to fiddle around with this when you're in combat. What we're going to do is we're going to look at what this H4 button does. There's a, a lot of documentation on this in the profile documentation and it, it makes people scared when they see that huge list of functions for this H4 switch. It's really simple. When my pinky switch is set to the middle and I move this up, look at my shields in the upper left of the HUD. So this is centered. This switch here is your shield control. It, it shifts power to the, your left and right or your forward and back shields. And if you happen to have top and bottom shields on a bigger ship, then this will, you know, the thumb on the throttle up and down will affect those shields. My Hornet doesn't, so I just have to worry about adjusting my shields here. Now say I want to change my power distribution between G1, G2, and G3. I switch the pinky to forward, and suddenly I can control my power distribution with my with my thumb. Now the sensitivity is not so good. This is another SIG bug. They've gotten worse on their control schemes. They have a lot of work to do. But this is about as sensitive as I could get it. Okay, go back to shield control mode. Pinky center. Great. Now if I switch this pinky switch down, it's going to hold down the Alt key. And by using the H four on my joystick, I can look at my cockpit panels. This is highly useful on ships like the Retaliator and the Constellation, uh, the Vanguard, where, uh, where things are just in a really strange position. Unfortunately, there is a bug right now that, uh, that is being worked around. As long as this pinky switch is back, your left alt key on your keyboard is actually being held down. This really messes people up when they alt tab back to Windows. So just make sure to set this back to center and, uh, and we'll get a forward view. So that's it. You have a modal switch here and your EAC switch here that all affects the behavior of your, your thumb. And uh, really it's, it's logically grouped. Uh, my power, my shields, my console cockpit views, and, and my HUD edit modes. Very nice. Now, 
what we're going to look at is some of the controls for precision flight, precision landing. We've looked at strafe um, and the general flight controls. What I want you to take a look at on this HUD in the middle, on the, the, the bottom left of the center, there's a pre and an SCM. And setting alt heading to center and pressing engage will toggle between these two modes. Pre is your precision flight mode. It uh, backs off on my throttle, makes my strafes more gentle, and generally allows much more refinement in my flight control. But this is obviously not good for combat, so to move to combat mode, I'm going to accelerate my throttle and hit this button to engage. You can see I'm now moving a lot more quickly, and I have to be a little quicker on the controls. Decouple, flip my ship, float backwards, accelerate the other way. Shoot up my runway. Okay. I want to land on a landing pad. Now let's just say that I uh, I don't know where they are. First of all, let's just locate those landing pads. I'm going to flip the switch down. I'm going to hit engage or disengage to go into landing mode. That's going to highlight on my radar and in my display where the landing pads are. Now I'm getting fairly close already. With the throttle not all the way forward, I'm going to Alt heading, engage to toggle pre mode. Go back into my landing mode. I'm going to take the landing pad that the uh, system's highlighted for me. I'm going to keep advancing on it. Now, not all ships have a landing computer that, that displays landing, but, but most of them do. The little snub fighters like the Merlin do not. Now, I want to turn on that landing computer. I'm going to be flip down and alt. I'm going to hold the engage button for one third of a second. And that brings up the landing computer. Now, gently, I'm going to level off and fly into this zone. Now, as you make contact with that zone, you're going to notice the thrusters become disabled. What you're going to do is center them decouple forward which gives me forward and reverse control of my thrusters. I'm going to bring my ship into a line with a landing pad. Now you'll notice now I, I'm good but if I overshoot I can center my throttle and bring it back and actually reverse the thrusters. I want to center it Okay, I'm in a good position now. Don't touch anything except my vertical switch. I'm going to use the slider to precisely bring my ship down onto the landing pad. Good, good, good degree of control. Now you'll notice if you have any red like this showing in your landing display, you want to level your nose out level your ship out and then bring it down flat so you don't crash it into the uh, the landing pad. And touchdown. Let's take a look at the external camera view, see how I did. Not bad, dead center. Up, Let's zoom out a little bit. Nice. Okay. Conversely, I want to raise my ship. I can. You generally want to fly with this thing centered. It's uh, otherwise you start strafing vertically, and you don't even know why. There we take off. Level it out. Oh, now look at that. I continue to float upwards because I am decoupled, which means I need to give opposite amount of thrust to stabilize. But to go back to IFCS flight computer mode here, and I'm going to pull back on the throttle and kill the thrust. I now centered on everything. The ship is stable. And I once again have full IFCS flight computer control. We're going to toggle back into the cockpit. Good, good. 
Now you'll see that I'm still in pre mode right now, so I still have that that fine grain control of the ship. You definitely don't want to do combat that way. Flip back into alt heading mode, press engage. I've cycled into the SCM, and I once again have full thrust. Now let's look at the opposite of of fine grain control. I want to show you boosts and afterburners. For that, we're going to use this trigger where my thumb is, and you're going to use this a lot in flight. If uh, I want to accelerate quickly in a particular direction or decelerate quickly, I'm going to pull back and boost. So once again, I accelerate, and to get there quickly, I pull the boost in. Now notice I'm not at 100% throttle here. If I continue to push forward with the button held, I will boost to the maximum and pull all the way back and boost and you'll see I quickly come to a stop so what I'm what I'm doing is I'm using fuel which uh, which is on the right side of my cockpit it's underneath the, the display right now pull this switch but but here's the trick say I want to use the afterburners I want to take this thing up to my maximum speed what I'm gonna do is push my throttle forward to max all the way to max and then boost again and now I've got a speed of 320 this is eating fuel let's boost to a stop so when you let, let's, let's show some practicality to this I'm flying quickly and I suddenly reverse decoupled mode change direction I'm flying backwards right now and I want to bring myself back to the other direction I could use that fuel I could boost to change my direction quickly but notice if you pull hard and you boost at the same time you're gonna start blacking out it's a lot of force to put on the pilot now the opposite of uh, going fast of course is going nowhere so if you want to apply some space brake you're just gonna click that up and uh, there's a few times I've, I've, I've put the space brake on I've gone and I've gotten myself a sandwich and I've come back and I said oh my god what's going on my thrusters aren't working right yeah sometimes you just gotta check make sure that space brakes not not sitting there in that locked position this comes in useful or handy you know you're coming in towards an object quickly another ship and uh, you can lock that space brake on it'll, it'll no matter where your throttle is it's gonna take you down so my brakes are applied and now they're off so boost and afterburn or just boost a little bit and space brake so we've covered kind of all of the aspects of flight and now it's up to you to get comfortable with the controls and put those things together I uh, hope, hope these, uh, this tutorial has been useful for you and uh, you're able to both land safely, do some fine grain control with the profile as well as uh, fly like a maniac. Um, we've covered pitch, yaw, thrust, coupled and decoupled, strafing. Uh, we've covered roll and yaw uh, for both rudder and non-rudder users. And we've looked at uh, landing modes and high acceleration modes. And uh, next, we're going to stop off into the Persistent Universe and put things together just a little bit more. We're going to look at some of the quantum modes and, uh, and a little bit of dogfighting. So uh, stay tuned. Coming right up. Here I'm loaded into the Persistent Universe. Again, EAC is off, pinky is middle, and my decoupled mode is set to the center. So that's kind of the, my starting configuration that I want to, to have when I get into a ship. If by chance these are inverted, so they are flipped around, this you know, maybe, maybe coupled was forward or back when you loaded into a new ship, what you want to do is then center this in-game and then hit the caps lock key to turn off the, uh, the coupled. 
um, and that will kind of synchronize those two controls. Same with EAC. If uh, by chance you were flipped up and you flip it to off position and you see a mouse cursor on your screen, just press on the home key and that will actually fix that control for you. It'll synchronize it. So let's run down here, get ourselves a Vanguard. Okay, here we are at the back of a Vanguard Warden. Hopefully no one else will jump in while we're doing the tutorial, but it's always interesting. Now you'll notice that controls are all set to neutral. I'm in the cockpit. And uh, here, especially on the Warden, you're going to use this pinky switch back. You're going to flip it back and then use H4 to look down to your consoles. Unfortunately, you cannot interact with the shields or anything else uh, uh, other than to use the mouse from this type of a view. It's uh, it's what we have to live with right now. So I flip this back. I'm going to use my slider. I'm going to take off. Clear. I'm going to look around. And get out of here. What I like to do is see if we, oh, there's a constellation. I'm going to, I'm going to decouple and just float. Just have a nice little look at that Connie. I'm going to undecouple and jig the throttle back. And now I've come to a nice stop. Okay, right now we're in pre-mode, which means we have a high degree of control. If I want to flip that in, I'm in the alt heading on the throttle, engage, and I'm now in SCM mode. Decouple, float a little bit, take a look at the station. You see how I'm moving in reverse, and it doesn't really matter where I point. I continue in that direction until I center the control. Little roll. Do a little strafing. Let's have a little look at our Vanguard. It's a it's a beautiful ship. And you can see our uh, thrusters firing nicely. Okay, back to the cockpit. So we want to go somewhere, don't we? We're going to um, bring up quantum drive mode. What I'm going to do is switch this to the path. And now I have a bunch of waypoints to choose from. Let's take uh, let's take 306. We line that up here on the throttle. I press engage, and I can just switch this back to the center. It won't matter. It's convenient because uh, well, well, we'll see why. When we come out, we're going to want to jump to cruise mode for just a burst. I'm full throttle forward. Notice I'm in the left of my HUD. It says SCM. You do not want to jump into cruise mode while aimed at a satellite. You'll, you'll crash into it. The Vanguard accelerates very quickly. I'm just going to take us up to 600. And now, using the, uh, the joystick, we're going to go into some combat mode. I'm going to use the hat here to push up to select the closest target. I want to use my other cannon, so I'm going to use the radar switch to switch, which group fires first. We're going to want to close. And watch this satellite. Decouple. Allows me to take a look, see where that guy is, and now I'm going to boost. And smash right into him. He's not fun. Okay. Come on, solar fly, get a kill. What is that? My pinky switch fires the missiles when I hold long. Let's suppose, um, well, we've got somebody else on that. We're going to run out of targets pretty quickly here. So 
So again, let's quantum drive somewhere. Flip it up into path. Let's pick a comma ray. Let's pick a, pick a higher numbered one. There's usually fewer people. Let's go to the 500s and see what happens. Engage and flip it back. I'm just going to put my throttle forward. Now we're going to use this hat to push up to target the closest enemy. Or we can pull down to pick an enemy that's underneath the cursor. Here I'm going to hit engage, just go into cruise mode for a burst. Let's see if there's anyone around. And there seems to be. I push up, I pick the closest target. And I'm going way too fast. Now I'm going to pull down and use my pinky to fire those flares. I don't uh, get the right angle. Go and here we go. Back off on the throttle. Make that turn. Follow the pip. Now you'll see the current flight model in the Vanguard is uh, really is behaving like a super hornet. It's it's a little bit too uh, agile, and uh, they will be patching that in a future release. So uh, don't expect to be making turns as steeply as we are now in a future patch. Let's go quantum drive. Let's find another place to play. Eight four nine. It's a good one. Now if I wanted to adjust my shields forward, of course we just I'm centered here, so I'm just gonna hit H4, give a little bit of forward shield. My missiles are on the pinky of the paddle on the joystick, this long paddle. I just tap it once to lock and then long press it to launch the missiles if I want to launch missiles. Some enemies. Let's give it a little bump and cruise. Okay, here we go. Get that targeting pip. Now I could fire just that second weapon with this switch over here. See? And pinky on the, the switch that's underneath the paddle, it's going to launch those countermeasures. If you want to cycle countermeasures, it's here on the red button on the throttle. That will cycle from a flare to a chaff. These little auroras that we have to fight are tough. That wraps it up for this tutorial video. If you guys have any comments, questions, or feedback, I'd love to hear it on Reddit or on the Star Citizen forums, and you can find links to contact me that way on 3dpipeline.net. Uh, once again, thank you to my backers at Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash solarfly. This is Solarfly signing off. See you in the verse. Oh, Solarfly got spaced. Solar fly got spaced.